Well, the one policy most definitely dead and done, even though it's cost us $16 million collectively so far, the merger of Television New Zealand and Radio New Zealand, uh, as proposed by uh, Chris Farfoy, he got an ex-New Zealand First MP to kind of do the legwork on it, and there were consultants up the wazoo working on this great merger that supposedly was going to strengthen or save, indeed, according to some reports, a struggling and on the brink of collapse Radio New Zealand. But that is all over. The $750 million or so we would have spent on this, well, it can go back into the into the pot to pay for a minimum wage rise. For her reaction to this, we are joined by someone who opposed it um, vociferously, Nationals Broadcasting Spokesperson, uh, Melissa Lee, MP. Um, and I'll just get her on the line now and push the button. Uh, Melissa, welcome to the platform. Good morning, Sean. You'd have to say, uh, I imagine, this is good news. Well, it is, but it's it's a little bit late coming, isn't it? We've been waiting for such a long time. That, uh, you know, everybody could actually see that it was a bad idea, but government took a long time to actually come to this decision. So, But it's finally there, so good. It's a good, good decision. It's the right decision. Okay. What then is the future of public broadcasting? And what is your vision well, for the future of public broadcasting? Well, I don't actually see that the public broadcasting is just, in, you know, the purview of RNZ and TVNZ. I think even private uh, media provides uh, public media uh, content. And, you know, it's, the, as I you know, have actually said many times, um, the media landscape is actually changing and the entities need to actually grapple with why audiences are moving away from their platforms or their you know, channels, mm. and they need to actually uh, look at the trends and become more competitive, whether it's actually, you know, publicly funded or not. Mm. And But I do not actually see that it is something that politicians should actually dictate. We should be leaving it up to the experts, mm. which are the broadcasters and, you know, media experts. Mm. But considering you talked about the consultants who actually worked on this merger yeah. uh, idea, and not one of them was public media experts. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. And they were getting so much money. Yes. Not one of them was public media experts. Good Lord. Look, the government has said it is going to tip more money into Radio New Zealand and into New Zealand on air. Do you think that is a good idea? Well, if they don't have enough funding to actually operate to their capacity and what they are supposed to do, I guess you need to look at the settings, but I haven't actually looked at all mm. of the mm. finances. I'm in opposition, I'm not government, but the minister should actually know what is actually missing. So yeah. I guess the minute prime minister has actually signaled that they're going to be you know, yeah. providing extra funding. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. And our leader, Christopher Luxon, has also said that. So okay. we'll have to look at it when we're in government. Yeah. So New Zealand on here to get more funding as well. Um, that it will dole out to its favourites, as it always does, and because it is dominated by uh, Labour uh, supportive um, governors, we imagine there will be a woke agenda that will typify the sorts of programmes that get New Zealand on air funding, can't we? Well, I hope not. It is well, an well, what would change? Entity, Why so would anything change, Melissa? Well, I guess under, uh, until a government changes, it won't change. Yeah. And look, I'll give you a personal perspective on this, Melissa. The government can tip as much money as it wants into New Zealand on air. The platform won't take it as long as there are editorial writers around things like our interpretation of the Treaty of Waitangi that we need to comply with before we can get that money. Well, that's that's a concern, isn't it? Yeah. And you are know, you media going to change should be that? independent. Would media should be independent. Okay, would you remove? New Zealand On Air's requirements and guidance, and, and we've covered this on this program, on the interpretation of the Treaty of Waitangi, um, you have to comply with that if you're a public broadcaster and you want New Zealand On Air funding. Will you remove those requirements? Well, I do not believe that media should have specific things dictated to by the funder, no. so yes. But they do at present. Well, that is something that they are doing. And, um, yeah, as I said, we're not the government. Once we I, are in government, we'll look at the settings. Well, no, no, I'm not asking you to look at it. I'm asking you to change them. I just said, we'll look at it and fix it. Uh, look at it and fix it. So that means change it or remove those requirements. <laughs> I thought that's what I said.
No, no, it didn't. You gave yourself a bit of wiggle room, to be honest. Uh, no, I did not. No, I mean, look, I, I, I'm not the minister, so I have not been responsible. So until you actually get there, you need to look at it mm. and then fix it. Yeah. On a wider... Um, on a wider sort of canvas, uh, Melissa, yesterday was quite remarkable. Yesterday was, you know, it was a policy purge by a government that can read polls and has already sacrificed what was a very popular leader in Jacinda Ardern and in the interest of the middle of the road, Chippy, and now has basically gone through, and I guess in many ways... Uh, whilst a lot of New Zealanders didn't understand that the merger, because of its dollar figure, was a was a huge policy, um, they're doing this so that they can stop National forming the, if you like, nucleus of the next government. Do you think it might work? Because I mean, what are you going to criticise them for now, Melissa? Well, I think one of the things that you're going to have to remember is that the Prime Minister himself and the senior ministers, including Carmel Cipollone and you know. Um, Robertson were part of the cabinet who sat around the table and decided to fund the merger and they approved it. And so, you know, it does, even though the merger is actually scrapped, that's the only thing that's effectively been scrapped. The others haven't. They've just been postponed and given to somebody else to have another look at, another working group. So effectively, none of it has actually been fixed. So there's plenty to still work on yeah. and you know it's it's the same old labor government same people making the decision the only you know changes that we've got a new prime minister yeah who I, seemed to try and appeal to the audiences and actually say hey this is a new labor well they were the ones who were responsible for making the decision to spend all that money all right um but you are not able today to tell me what your vision for broadcasting is well, our policy isn't out yet, so I okay. won't be doing that today. All right. When is it going to be out? Well, uh, given time, you know, th there's a long <laughs> way to go before October 14. How long is a, is a piece of string? You guys worried? <laughs> yeah, when's your next caucus? You got a caucus today? Well, we've actually had a caucus uh, meeting uh, uh, in January and we've had uh, Zoom meetings, but we are we are literally, um, you know, chomping at the bits to get back to Parliament, which happens next week. So well, looking forward it's going to gonna it. be game on, isn't it? It is all go. Yes, definitely. And looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's not going to be the cakewalk maybe you thought. There's life and labour yet. Well, um, hmm. uh, when you consider the fact that uh, Willie Jackson, whose uh, portfolio uh, was the highlight of yesterday, uh, where the, his policy, uh, well, I guess uh, it was Chris Farfoy's policy, got axed, and you sort of look at it and go, hang on a minute, wasn't there a cabinet reshuffle and he got promoted? So what does that signal? Yeah. I'm not so sure if there's actually new... Well, Three Waters is still live, isn't it? And that seems to exactly. be a more, a more problematic policy to roll back. Um, maybe Willie was happy to let the broadcasting thing go, but it, it just seems to me uh, that Three Waters might be a bridge too far in terms of reshaping Labour well, and the public's opinion. Things. I guess it's actually gone back, you know, gone to the Law Commission. So yeah. it's, it's sort of like, what does that actually signal? It's not dead yet, so we've got a, we've got a lot of fights on as well still. All right. Hey, lovely talking to you as always, Melissa. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. That is Melissa Lee, the um, spokesperson on broadcasting uh, for the National Party. And, of course, uh, in case you missed it yesterday, and there was so much going on yesterday, the TVNZ RNZ merger is over. It was a $750 million project that was always ill-defined in terms of what it might achieve and has cost you a cool $16 million for people faffing around trying to settle up in the first place. What is the government going to do in broadcasting? It's going to give money, more money to New Zealand on air, which if you're woke enough, you can get money from. But you've got to be woke. And in fact, they've got rules for how woke you've got to be on things like the Treaty of Waitangi. So I'm not sure, actually, that that's a great result, is that you just get more woke journalism um, with the funds being funnelled uh, through uh, New Zealand on air. And, of course, more money to RNZ to make its woke stuff, Right. Um, TVNZ, I imagine they're breathing a sigh of relief at TVNZ that they can continue. And what's the difference between the organisations? Well, Radio New Zealand's like instant coffee compared with, you know, a barista. TVNZ, people on TV, they're barista people. They're like lattes and cappuccinos. And Radio New Zealand's always been instant, but in this cafe with a lump of sugar. Um, 
in a chip mug. Um, that's Radio New Zealand.